nothing into this world and it is certain that we can carry nothing out the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away blessed be the name of the Lord at this time we invite Colonel Destin Smalling from the JDF to continue our Thanksgiving service we start with Hayana Winch, followed by Powell's Academy, Remembrance by the Family, and then we have a tribute by the Combat Support Battalion, Jamaica Defense Force. There's no pain Jesus can feel. There is no Yours. It's 
lies There's no pain Jesus can feel There is no hurt He cannot heal For all things work According to His perfect will No matter what You're going through Hallelujah. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We shall be glad and rejoice in it. We're very happy today from Paul's Academy to be here to share of our love, our warmth in the thanksgiving service of our dear brother Reed brother, friend, uncle, and everything to you all. We just want to let you know that death is an enemy, and so often he comes and takes our loved ones. But there is hope. It is not final. There is hope. Because of the end, at the end of it all, we hope that we will meet together on the other shore. So I encourage our dear Sister, our dear daughter, Gabrielle, her sisters, mother, friend, well-wishers, and everyone, be strong in the Lord. He will keep you. He will make you strong that you will be conqueror. So God bless you all. At this time, we are going to be doing a tribute. Your dear sister in the Lord and friend will be singing for you. Daddy. You gave life to me, turned a baby into a lady. And daddy, all you had to offer was a promise of lifetime of love. Cause I know there is no other love like a father's love for his child and i know a love so complete someday must leave must say goodbye goodbye's the saddest word i ever hear goodbye's the last summer will hold you near someday Say that word and I will cry. It'll break my heart to hear you say goodbye. Daddy, you gave love to me. Turn the young one into, into a woman. And daddy, all I ever needed was a guarantee a 
if you love me Cause I know there is no other Love like a father's love for his child And it hurts so that something so strong Someday will be gone Must say goodbye Goodbye's the saddest word I ever hear Goodbye's the last time I will hold you near Someday darkest night I'll be the wings that guide your broken flies I'll be a shelter to the raging storm and I will love you till forever comes goodbyes to the Coming from Gabberly to Daddy. Gabberly, cheer up. We love you and we'll continue to love you. Casey, cheer up too. God bless you. Um, there's a remembrance from the Reeds family. Remembrance for the late Corporal Gabe Reed. Today a soldier came home, not marching down the street to waves and chairs, but in a box covered with a flag of black, green, and gold. Why did he have to die? The questions ring out. He was so young and full of life. There was so much he had to do and offer, but God knows best since the day he took Gabe home, and now he's at rest. Corporal Gabe Reed will always be remembered as a patriotic shining star that glows with ambition, his dedication and per perseverance to push forward until a determined task is accomplished. Gabe believed in the unity and love family should have, hence, he would strengthen his band with his wife and children. To his family, he was brightest as a thousand points of light. Gabe was always busy, a man in constant motion, but never too busy to share his love of life 
with those around him. He was a genuine, he was genuine, he was a genuine optimistic man and believed the grass, the grass was always greenest on his side. He wasn't afraid to take any risk. Once he went to his sister's house to borrow her car. The vehicle was, uh, was standard. And he persuaded her to borrow it. Yvette, his sister, went along with him for a ride. During the drive, every minute the car would stop or slow down. She was puzzled by, his, by this because Gabe pre pre pretended as he can drive. He knew he couldn't drive, she said. She looked at him and said, you can't drive. He turned to her with a smiling face and said, how me fi know fi drive and me no have no care? He accepted that failure is a part of living a full life, but taught, but taught us never to, never to define by it. He'd show us that setback and strength. He, he showed us that setback can strengthen if we never give up. Gabe was al always cheerful. Gabe was always cheerful. He loved to laugh, and sometimes, when the joke was really hilarious, he would shout out, "Why?" Furthermore, Gabe believed that a day wasn't meant to be wasted. Every morning, he would wake up at 4 a.m. and head to the gym with his daughter Christine and gym partner Lisa for their regular workouts. There are no words that can be said. At last, his sweet soul winged its way to peace and freedom, to a place where never to suffer or cry again. It's all a part of God's great plan, which it remains a mystery to man. We cannot understand his ways, nor can we count our earthly days. Who are we to question and doubt? God knoweth well what he's about. He knew that Corporal Gabe Reed's time was up. It was time for him to take his rest. Tragedy on January 12, 2019, took his hand and called him home. His time on earth was end. His chapter was closed. A life well lived is a precious gift of hope and strength and grace from someone who has made our world a brighter and better place. It's filled with moments, sweet and sad, with smiles and sometimes tears, with friendships formed and good times shared and laughter through the years. A life well lived is a legacy of joy and pride and pleasure, a living, lasting memory our grateful hearts will treasure. Corporal Gabe Reed has gone from our sight, but never from our memories. He is gone from our touch, but never our hearts. May your soul rest in peace. God gives a life, he takes it away, he is the potter, and I I am the clay 
point of view the last sunset and cross all the sea I know a sunrise will be waiting for me sympathy on your loss. A grateful Jamaica Defense Force shares in your grief. The day he decided to join our ranks, he knew that it was something he had to do. And like in the passage from the Bible in Isaiah, the voice of the Lord was heard saying, whom shall I send? Who will go? for us. Then said Isaiah, here am I, Lord, send me. And that's from Isaiah 6, verse 8. It was on the 16th day of July in the year 2004 that Corporal Gabe Reed, or Rel, as he would later be known, answered the call of duty 
and embarked on his journey from civilian to soldier. His first task was to conquer the much heralded and arduous basic military training in the hills of St. Andrew at the Caribbean Infantry Training Center, which then was known as the Newcastle Training Depot. Over the course of 22 weeks, Rell and his fellow recruits learned basic tactical and survival skills, along with how to shoot, rappel, and march. He also learned the hallmarks of military life and customs, and learned how to live by the JDF's core values of courage, commitment, honor, integrity, loyalty, and discipline. It was in his nature to excel. And on completion of his basic military training, he attained the rank of private and was posted to the Support and Services Battalion. In November 2004, while still at a very early stage in his career, he was posted to the 2nd Battalion, the Jamaica Regiment, where he served as a rifleman. In this fundamental role in the military, he sacrificed much and toiled daily to do his part in taking care of his fellow soldiers and with them to give selflessly to the myriad of duties and tasks that they had to undertake. Owing to his humility and dedication, he earned the utmost regard of his superiors and his peers alike. And in just five months, he managed to distinguish himself. And in February 2005, he answered a further call to broaden his military endeavors. He was soon elevated to more responsibility in a specialist environment at the Jamaica Defense Force Air Wing. There, he gave five years of unbroken service before he was promoted to the rank of Lance Corporal in September 2010. In this rank, he officially became a young leader of the force and he provided us with sound and steady tactical expertise. Those of us who worked with him knew that he was always doing something for someone and never taking credit for it. He was extremely dependable and for that reason he was often called upon when the hardest assignments had to be done. His maturity and above average level of professionalism earned him a place at the Combat Support Battalion in 2010. There, he served as a combat medic, a paratrooper, a naval boarding party member, and also a section commander. And while being a true champion in these roles, he earned his promotion to the rank of corporal in November 2018. At that time, he remained a highly regarded soldier whose love for his country was unwavering. And after 14 years of service, he would then commence his transition from the Jamaica Defense Force, yeoman-like, steadfast, and unsolid. During the entirety of his service, he completed some notable professional development milestones to include scuba diving, command and leadership qualification, tactical combat casualty care, naval boarding party qualification, winchman techniques course at the JDF Air Wing, and his paratroopers course in Guyana. I must tell you, congregation, he excelled in all of them, and over time, he became one of the best first aiders we've ever seen. He was also one of, if not, the fittest soldier we have ever seen and have had the pleasure to serve with. We remember how revered he was at the forces cross-country races and in international competitions. As his colleague and friend, I am extremely proud and consider it an honor to have served with Corporal Reed, and will always remember his counsel, his humility, his loyalty, and his dedication to us all. 
to those gathered here today. He was a son, husband, father, brother, motivator, peacemaker, barrack room lawyer, as we would say in the military, and an overall vibes man. A brave man, some will say hero, and undoubtedly a dear friend. He transitioned from this life in tragic circumstances, but on reflection, he did it with a seemingly focused regard, only to protect himself. And while doing so, epitomizing to the very end his and our core values. We want to recognize and celebrate the numerous sacrifices that Gabe made during his service in honor of Jamaica, in honor of himself, his family, and his friends. To his family, I wish to convey to you our sorrow, but also our deepest respect and profound regard for Gabe. He was a young man who answered the call for service and did so as not just a soldier, but as a soldier among soldiers. And to you, Corporal Reed, Rel, Per Terra, Per Mare, Per Aram, by land, by sea, by air, you were the best of us, and we salute you. We are proud to have served alongside you in choosing this line of duty. You worked and branded yourself as someone passing unique strength of character and determination. We honor you and remember your valor. And we know that a special place exists in the afterlife where warriors gather with profound respect and condolences. Jamaica Defense Force thanks you. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Sharon Bulgin, and the rest of our church family, we stand here today to express our deepest heartfelt condolences to the family and friends of the late Corporal Gabe Reed. You see, we are here supporting our dear brother, Dean Reed, who is the big brother of Corporal Reed. The song that we're about to sing was dedicated to Dean Reed by his little brother Gabe. You see, he visit, visited Jamaica in December of 2018, where he was picked up by his little brother Gabe at the airport. The two brothers had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation where his little brother Gabe expressed his love and appreciation to him. He remembered Gabe saying, Dean, that's on your feel. Here, that's on your feel. If you ever feeling down and like you have no way to go if you're feeling like an outcast as the problems overflow just remember there is someone and all it takes is for you to know is that God is the answer and God answers back if you're done feeling down and 
But your strength will surely come In the midst of all the heartaches All the battles they are already won Just remember in your trials Don't give up certain God answers prayer I don't know if there's anyone who can dispute that fact God answers prayers we have another tribute from the Jamaica Defense Force which will be followed by the eulogy the eulogy will be read by 
Tania Campbell, and then we invite Elder Mackenzie to do the opening prayer. To my brother, Gabe Deval Reed, we've been through situations and I salute you to the family. You've been in your storm. It seems like forever. Nights of confusion. They've been so long. Your ship has lost anchor. And the storm's got you drifting. But your morning is coming. Just ride out in your storm. Ride out your storm. God is there with you. You may not feel it, but you're not alone. You're But your morning is coming Just hold on to Jesus And ride out your storm Just remember His promise He said, I'll never leave you And ride out your storm. A heaven called a hero home. Somewhere in the night, a soldier is waiting. Without thinking how much he's aching. His hardened body is sleep deprived. However, he's unbroken and vigilant to keep you alive. Somewhere, this warrior is the tip of a spear. Through grueling conditions, he made it there. In this barren and desolate world, he chose to lead. He lived his life by a written creed. Unselfishly, you left your mother and your father. You left behind your sister and your brothers. Leaving your beloved children and wife, you put a hold on your dreams and your life. On this soil, you will be planted after fighting for those whose safety and freedom you've granted. With death being the price you paid, our respect and admiration are of the highest grade. Though you've left us for the other side, your memories in our hearts reside. But your morning is coming. From those of us who defend our nation, we salute you, a defender, a protector, a gladiator, a, a warrior, Gabe Deval Reed, the last of his breed from an era when ships are made of wood and men are, were made of steel. To all of us, 
who have been downrange. To us and those like us, a darn few. Commandos! Just hold on to Jesus and ride out your storm. Eulogy for the life of the late Corporal Gabe Duval Reed. Firstly, I'd like to thank everyone for being here today to honor and celebrate the life and accomplishments of Corporal Gabe Reed. I'm sure he would be pleased to see so many of his friends and family here today. Whether you knew him as an uncle, friend, co-worker, brethren, father, neighbor, or even acquaintance, you probably have the same level of appreciation for him as I did. They are some persons who bring a light to so great to this world that even after they have passed, the light still remains. Gabe Reed was one of them. He was born in the parish of Manchester on Tuesday the 18th of December in the year 1984. He was the last child to be born from the union of David and Evelyn Reed, as his siblings would have called him the wash belly. His early education started where he attended the, the wards Park Basic School, then Hatsfield Primary and Junior High School, where he was successful in the Grade 9 Achievement Test and was placed at the St. Elizabeth Technical High School. At the age of 13 years old, Gabe was baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with the Holy Ghost. At the One Way Apostolic Church, where his body is now lying. His friends in the community would often call him pastor, as he would always invite them to church. Whenever he was at church as a child and the choir marched in, he would just sit with tears of joy. His mother would always tell the story of Gabe when he was three years old. One day he was laying on his bed, looking up into the ceiling, and begun to sing this song. Lord, I am trying, trying to make heaven my home. While in high school, Gabe met his first love, Christina Davis, who got pregnant with her first daughter, Christine Reed. Becoming a father meant the world to him. As an independent young man, he quickly seek employment at Pro Hardware, where he worked for about three months. Afterwards, he was then employed at Treasure Box Jewelry, vigoring for a better life for his family. He was accompanied by his favorite brother, Dean, to Kingston, where he enlisted in the Jamaica Defense Force in 2004. In 2006, he proposed and got married to Christina Davis and worked tirelessly to provide for his family. In 2008, Gabe was blessed with another daughter, Gabrielle Reed, who was the treasure or the jewel to his heart. Gabe was always be remembered as a man of principle, good discipline, very punctual, humble and courteous. He would often speak and meditate on positive things and always thinking of new ideas how to make money. He hated negativity and you would never gossip beside him. Just the thought of bad energy would get him upset. He was intelligent and articulate, an interesting man to talk to, but, but most importantly, he was someone who would really listen. He would understand and appreciate your point of view, even if it was different from his own. In addition, he was a cheerful individual who loved listening to music. His favorite song was, 
greatness are running on my blood. He believed that all his dreams would come true because he had the courage to pursue them. As such, he was enrolled in the University of the West Indies and through his experiences, he delivered six babies. Whenever he talked about delivering the babies, his face would light up as beautiful as the night sky and he was really happy. When Gabe's marriage with Christina Davis took a turn, he met and fell in love with Ninora Rigo, who both got married in 2017. Gabe loved his wife, Ninora, and would probably speak of how disciplined she was, ambitious and pleasant. He loved her because they both had similar personality traits, and this would brighten his face whether he talks about Ninora. In 2015, he and his cousin John started a car mart in Spur Tree until he decided to venture off into his own business in 2018. The name of his car mart was King's Royal Auto, the vehicle's kingdom, where he operated in the selling of new and used vehicles located on Winston Jones Highway. The succession of his business was a blessing to him, as, his, as this was his life's aspiration to become a business owner. And every day, the first thing that he would did do when he reached the car mart was to pray and acknowledge God's presence. His passion for his business allowed him to train and got certified at the Caribbean Maritime University to become a truck driver, as this skill would be great asset to his business expansion. Gabe, we love you. You will be greatly missed and will always be in our hearts. He lives to mourn his parents, David and Evelyn Reed, wife, Lenora, daughters, Christine and Gabrielle, his sisters, his brothers, four nieces, three nephews, military family, and other relatives and friends. May his soul rest in peace. Then since my soul, my savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Almighty God and Father, Savior Jesus Christ, we come to you, Lord, this another day. We acknowledge you as God. You are the creator, God, of all existing things, both visible and invisible. It was you, God, who created man from the dust of the earth. And man was motionless, and you breathed into the nostril of man the bread of life. And man became a living soul. We thank you, God, for the life, O oh God, Father of Gabe. We thank you, great God, that he had served the nation well. We thank you, Lord God, for the gathering together in this fashion, God, this afternoon. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you take, O oh God, the evening proceedings in charge. We ask for your leading. We pray for your direction. We pray, Lord God, for your blessing in a special way. Father, we pray, great God, for those who weep, that they, God, will be comforted. For you are the great comforter. You are God, the peace speaker. And so I pray that, Lord God, you will speak peace, Lord God, in this setting. Let everything, God, be done decently and in order. Let your favor, Lord God, rest upon us. Oh, God, take even the family in charge. Father, we pray, Lord God, as your word declare, we're to weep with them that weep. And mourn, God, with them that mourn. For we know that weeping may endure for a night. But, oh, God, joy comes in the morning. Have your way, have your say. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Please remain standing for the hymn. Oh Lord my God, when I live
Hallelujah. Please be seated. We now have the first lesson, Lamentations 3, 22 to 26, and 31 to 33. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because of his compassion that fails not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. For the Lord will not cast off forever, but through, but though he causes grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he doth not afflict unwillingly, nor grieve the children of men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Thank, Thank Lieutenant Colonel Dixon from the Combat Support Battalion for reading that lesson. We invite Christine and Gabrielle to come forward to read the second lesson. The second lesson is taken from 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 to 18 and it reads, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them at, at also which sleep in Jesus with God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord with the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 18 and last. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Wonderful to carry me home. Oh, to carry me Well, if you ever get there before I do, come and carry me home. Tell all my friends I'm coming there too. Come and carry me home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Coming after me, coming for Sing like a sweet child Coming for to carry me home The one that has said How beautiful heaven must be Hallelujah What a time it's going to be what a day of rejoicing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You see, we are here to celebrate the life of our dear brother that have departed. And I'm sure that you will agree with me. Whatsoever God done is well done. And what God says is well said. And so we might not able to understand why 
but God knows why. And so we have every right to give him thanks in the good times and in the bad times. Praise the Lord. And I would to God if I could um, get the permission from the senior officer to allow the soldiers to be at ease for a time so that they can shout with us when we are shouting. <laughs> Praise the Lord Church. Because I do believe that they are persons and their souls to be saved. Praise the Lord Church. Praise the Lord Church. Somebody said make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. Well, you see sometimes when you're in a uniform you have to remember that you're in a uniform when you have to. Praise the Lord Jesus. But somebody said won't it be a time when we get over yonder officers we will be changed from mortal hallelujah somebody to immortality so the JDF the JCF the ISCF or whatever CF uniform will be changed uniform will be the heavenly uniform hallelujah to sing and shout the praises of almighty God he is sweet I know hallelujah God is good yes I remember the clock is still on the wall and I'm still seeing it but God is good I am not up here to necessarily talk about Gabe. I'm here to talk to you. Everybody else talk about Gabe, but my duty is to talk to you. Amen, everybody? Yes, I have my little experience with Gabe. Yes, we know him from a little boy. And the last thing that stands out in my mind, somebody come up with something near to that. I had something to do with a house that his mother is building and the major the columns and they said the figure is something like 400 and something feet and Gabe said he not believe that so much I'm going to measure it so he went and he measured it and he come and he said I'm not get so much I'm get 200 and hard so I said to Gabe, I said, Gabe, did you know that you have some columns that they call single columns and you know some that they call double columns? He said, no. He said, then how could you go and measure the columns that you don't know the difference between single or double or triple? All he did was laugh and said, one day we get there. I love his spirit. He said, one day he will get there. He's still in training. So as some person says, he's always trying. And I like that. And I believe the turnout this afternoon tell us that many persons appreciate him. And so we all have an appointment and this is an appointment Amen. that we have to keep persons had planned to be in this funeral service but they can't make it so they have to miss the service Amen. but we have an appointment with death and when that appointed time comes, try as we might. It don't matter if you are dressed or you are undressed. It don't matter if you are at home or you are on the street. It don't matter if you are in bed or you are in kitchen. 
adopted when it is the appointment it is the appointment and so it behoves each and every one of us to be conscious that game only gone on a little while before us or the appointment the next appointment will be ours that is I want to draw your attention quickly to a funny story in the Bible from St. Luke chapter 16. And I, if I tell you the, the, the two main persons, then you, I don't have to say anything else. And it has to do with a certain rich man. And a certain beggar named Lazarus and if I could get across this thought to somebody make use of your opportunities in life while you can because a day is coming when you are not able to make use of these opportunities so the Bible have us know that there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and feared sumptuously every day. And this man fit the prof profile of a person that we would all like to be. rich man clothed in purple and fine linen and when he's ready to eat he eat the best Amen. nothing wrong with that no, talk to me the church Amen. anything wrong with that no, sir. if you work hard you have a right to eat good yes. and you have a right to wear good clothes nothing wrong with that Praise the Lord Church. Amen. So we are not here to knock everybody because they wear linen and they wear purple and they rich. In fact, we have read about so many rich persons in the Bible. Amen. Job was a very rich man, you know. Yes. But he was a one of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let us see what is so important about this rich man and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores wow that sound like a nobody that sound like someone who no one in here would like to be like he was a beggar and he was full of sores. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, <coughs> moreover, the dogs came and licked his sore. It sounds like somebody that has been forgotten by society, family and all. And the only person that remembers that his sores needed attention was the dogs and the only catering person was the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table and I'm sure if I ask this afternoon who would like to be in that man's position nobody But there seems to be some background about these two persons. Amen. That we don't get at a first glance. You see, sometime in our life, we look at people and we tell that this is a bad person or a good person. And if you were looking at these two persons, 
you would see Lazarus as a bad person and he must have done some wicked things in life while he is begging and full of souls. And Dives must have done some good things in life while he have money, wear good clothes, and eat good. Praise the Lord, church. You see, man look at the outward appearance, but God see at the heart. So there was something that was not obvious to man, but it was obvious to God. And so we go on to read that, and it came to pass that the beggar died. And was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Wow. We start to see a new picture. We start to notice that there was something about this man that was not so obvious. He died. But no. He is carried. We were singing the song a while ago, sweet, sing low. By angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died. One, the poor man died. Two, the rich man died. Death is equal. Both rich and poor die. But it's appointed unto man once to die. But after that, so Lazarus somehow, in spite of his condition, in this life, he hung on to the fact that he served a great, big, wonderful God. In fact, I think some says his name means God is my help. So can you imagine Lazarus was all this time begging and have souls and he was saying to himself, God is my help. I will not let go of a God and yeah, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will not fear no evil. For thou art with me. The rod and thy staff. I am begging for no. But I have a hope that one day it will be different. I will be changed. I will be newborn. might look hopeless and helpless but this is not permanent it's a temporary situation only for a time I am waiting what Job said I will sit and wait until my change come I know the God in whom I serve so when Lazarus died Probably there was nobody to organize a funeral like this. Hallelujah. But what we saw gave us the impression that heaven had already made preparation for Lazarus going home service. So when he died, he was carried by angels. When Dives died, the rich man died. There were persons willing and ready to plan the funeral service. Hallelujah, somebody. There were persons standing by to get a share of his wealth. So what they did, they plan the funeral and they bury him. Yes. 
The rich man was buried and the poor man was carried. While we are sitting here today, I would ask us a question. Which of these positions no would you like to be in? In the first instant, everybody wants to be the rich man, clothes in purple and feel sumptuously. But in that, what we see now happen, the rich man is now poor. And the poor man is now rich. Can you tell me how many persons who died are carried by angels? Well, you know of many persons who died who is buried. Amen. Which of these positions would you like to be in? Would you like to be in Lazarus' position or the rich man's position? I am not sure that you will be now saying you want to be on the rich man's side. And the rich man, by extension, no longer mean Divies, but it now means Lazarus. Because many of us won't even live to see a hundred years. But eternity is too long for us to be on the wrong side of it. Praise the Lord somebody. Praise the Lord somebody. So Lazarus finds himself in a situation where in fact he was rich. Rich in God. Rich in Christ. All this time he was there begging. He was rich in Christ. And when it matters most, his riches was able to find him a resting place. While the rich man's riches was left behind for relatives and friends. So he was buried a poor man. Let me see if we can hurry it a little bit. <laughs> and, it, and in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and see Abraham afar off. Who you say no all Abraham? And Lazarus in his bosom. Saying, but I take a good look at who Lazarus is. Can you imagine now? How many times in past Lazarus and Atim tell Lazarus morning? Praise the Lord, somebody. But knowing they are far off and him see Lazarus and he can recognize Lazarus and him see Abraham and can recognize Abraham. And he cried and said wow 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 who do you think was crying all this time no, no poor beggar man Lazarus no it happens that we have the rich man now crying and what was he saying father Abraham on me and ascend Lazarus that he may dip his the tip of his finger can you imagine the beggar Lazarus with him dirty finger with him sore foot finger this man that feared sumptuously Dress in purple. His condition was of such that he did not remember about what public health, about hygiene. He was not worried about the fact that he was in hell, in torment, and he was thirsty. And as rich as he was, he was no poor, so poor that he could not buy a bottle of water. So he was 
saying allow Lazarus not a cup of water not a spoon of water I am so thirsty that I will satisfy with a tip and Lazarus finger it was too late for Lazarus had finished his course and David has finished his course so look how the, this man here. He might tell them to make Lazarus become a what? A servant drink your water come give him. And he was now alluding to the fact that where Lazarus was, there were water. But he found out that where he was, there was no water. The opportunities that he had while he was alive, he never used it, he never accepted God as his personal savior. But Lazarus did, and that is why Lazarus was where he was. And but Abraham said, No, 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 let me read this little part. To dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. The rich man said, If my tongue could have cooled, it would have good. My hand hot, my foot hot, my head hot. But me know me now get enough water to cool them. Now. But just my tongue, just my tongue, I will be satisfied with just the cooling of my tongue. What did Abraham say? But Abraham said, and said Son, remember this. Though in thy lifetime, Receive us thy good things. And likewise Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted and so are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would Pass from ends to you cannot. Yes, there is a barrier. So Abraham said, Look here, me sorry for your son. And even if me want to do that, it is not possible. Because it is there is a goal fixed between me and you. Praise the Lord, somebody. No wonder the songwriter said, There is no repentance in the grave. Let us go a little further before we quit. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou shouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Let us give him some credit. He don't want his brothers to suffer the same fate like him. Praise the Lord, church. How many of us have that attitude? Me suffer it, so you must suffer it too. But he was saying, I don't want my brothers. Yeah, we can call him if I'm selfish as much as we want because he was saying, send him to my father's house because I don't want my brothers come here at least he was thinking of somebody else why is you have the opportunity can think of somebody think of somebody and if you can make a difference in the life of somebody do it Abraham said unto him they have Moses and the prophets let them hear them they have what? Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. So many people are saying, I will not accept God until me get dream from a granny. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, church. But the word of God said they have what? Moses and the prophet. Whether they literally have the man Moses or they have the writing of Moses and the prophet. In other words, the word of God is available and they need to listen it and accept it before it's too late. Let them hear them. What did he say? And he said unto him, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. So dive is no now. Some man need to repent. It's important to repent whilst you have the opportunity before it's too late. And, and, and he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they hear the be persuaded though one rose from the dead. Can I say this to you? If Gabe come out of this casket today, the amount of who run and gone. I do Gabe, I say, repent, repent, repent. I mean, I don't accept any soldier them, but maybe all them run gone too. of your opportunity in life because there is going to be a day when you will not have the opportunity the rich man have every opportunity he could have chartered jet come a church he could have been in one church and in one yard you have the opportunity now to accept the Lord before it's too late Make use of the opportunity. Hell is real. Heaven is real. Now if I ask the question, who wants to go to hell? Nobody wants to go to hell. If I ask the question, who wants to go to heaven? Everybody wants to go to heaven. Can I prove to the soldiers that some of them are cowards? I'm going to prove to you. If I stop, no. And say, all those who would like to accept the Lord as a personal savior, come. And no soldiers going to stand up down there and say, me not ready yet. I wonder if, if me go now, me not know what will happen tomorrow. I don't know if me can manage it and if me can this and if me can that. I'm sure that that none of the teaching will them get. Them get teaching that they should be brave. Not true? Yes. Not true? Yes. Answer me, no soldier. <laughs> See, they're so coward that they're afraid to answer me. <laughs> <laughs> if I was to say to them, if you would like to accept the Lord as your personal Savior, walk up up here. Walk up, come up here. A lot of if and but. And I don't know and I can't make it and I can't do and I can't say and I don't know what to. Whether you know it to be true or not, one day your body will be lying in a casket like this with a flag draped like this. And nobody from upper camp is willing to go in the casket with you. And nobody will go in the grave with you. If they drop in there, they jump out. But if you have Jesus with you, even in the grave, even in the casket, he will not leave you nor forsake you. When no one else will go with you, God is ready and willing to go with you. So we need to surrender to God before it's
is too late. For there is going to be a time when it's going to be too late. Yes, Mr. the clock. There is going to be a time when it's going to be too late. Can I challenge somebody? Who is next? There is a casket before us. But who will be next? Who will be next? Somebody is standing at the front of the line. One man sing one song. I'm next in line for my blessing. But somebody is next in line to join. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I am interested to tell you today. Get salvation down in your soul while the blood is running warm in your vein. God bless you in Jesus' name. Two days in a row we have heard the same message. If you were next, would you be ready? If you were next, would you have made your salvation sure? We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Gabe. Lord, strengthen our hopes so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. And this we pray to you, O Lord. Lord. We pray for Christine and Gabrielle and the rest of the family. That the Lord will fill the present emptiness in their hearts with the love and prayerful support of many friends. We pray to you, O Lord. For each of us with whom Gabe so generously shared his life, gifts, and talents. May we too grow in the ability to share our gifts and to lighten the burdens of others. We pray to you, O Lord. For all those who loved and were loved by Gabe that we may find comfort in our belief in the Lord's promise to us of eternal life. We pray to you, O Lord. For each of us here present, that God will bless us richly with the gifts he knows we need to fully celebrate life and to recognize the new beginning he offers us day by day. We pray to you, O Lord. Father of all, you gave your son Jesus Christ to suffering and to death on the cross and raised him to life in glory. Grant us a patient faith in time of darkness and strengthen our hearts with the knowledge of your love through the same Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord. Amen and amen. Let us stand. By the raising of our right hand, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer.
and hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God our brother gave, and we commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor. That when your well beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this our brother gave and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who have finished their course. Now rest in peace. May we and all who have died in the true faith of your holy name have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Christ eternal, grant to give, O Lord, and let thy perpetual shine upon him. May he and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious to him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. Hence, what I firm of Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.